What's up guys, my name is Emmanuel and I hope you like that preview, and today I will teach you the technical knowledge and fundamentals that professional 3D artists use and the same fundamentals I used to do my artworks like this. Just a heads up, I am assuming that you already know the basics of 3D modeling like sculpting, texturing etc. So I am not gonna teach you how to use a certain 3D softwares or spoon feed you how I did that step by step, but hear me out. I assure you that this video will help you to become a better 3D artist and possibly win a lot of projects in the future by just understanding the basic fundamentals of creating beautiful artwork that can stand out from the crowd even you are beginner or not. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the first guide. Tip number 1. Learn Fundamentals. Fundamentals are basically the essential knowledge or basis on how to do certain things, even if it sounds like it's unrelated to the 3D arts field. A good example of this is the human anatomy fundamentals. It sounds like a fundamental that medical practitioners use, but believe me or not, it's very useful in human character modeling and sculpting. I hear you asked, why the heck do I need to learn the parts of our body? I am just a 3D artist. Well, think zombies, how do you think they made it in the movie like in The Walking Dead? Did they just make those torn muscles, skins and exposed intestines by just guessing? Of course not, you won't believe how wide their knowledge on human anatomy. They know where every muscles, bones, organs etc. It's really amazing how accurate and spot on they are on their zombies. On this artwork I am doing, you will see that I am using a references of skulls but I actually have a pretty decent knowledge in human anatomy. I know some of the parts of the body, what they call, important body landmarks etc. Combining your knowledge in human anatomy plus the use of references makes sculpting a human body related 3D models really really fast. I will explain some of the most useful fundamentals for 3D artists later like the aging and deterioration of materials, scene composition and color theory. So make sure you stay tuned. Tip number 2. Low, Mid, High. Basically, it's a type of workflow where you will build a scene or a character from the biggest detail to mid detail to higher detail. Let's start with the low detail. In character modeling it's often called the basic silhouette of the character which is the outline shape of your character. In scene composition however it's often called the scene blocking, which is a workflow where you will just use very basic shapes to represent an element in a scene. For example, on this scene I did a long time ago, at first you will see the scene is just a bunch of basic shape and that's what you call the low detailing part. And then after establishing the basic shapes, you can now add mid details. And high details. So the idea is you start with the most basic shape of a scene OA character, so you can see a bigger picture first before putting finer details on it. I hear you asked, why not just finish every part of a character or a scene in just one go? Well, the answer is, believe me or not, it is easier to revise and remove bad elements and retain the good ones without giving a lot of effort to a certain part of a scene or character which might just end up removed or revised, which kinda sucks. Imagine this way, you are sculpting a human body but you decided to sculpt the hands first from start to finish, leaving the body unrendered and undetailed and you realize that your proportion and silhouette is very off. You're gonna have a hard time revising the whole character thing again and you will end up slicing and trashing the hand because it does not fit your character a lot which is a waste of time and effort. So use low mid high technique if you want to save time. Tip number 3. Fundamentals of Material Weathering and Deterioration It is really important to know how things deteriorate especially if you want to make your 3D arts hyper-realistic. So you asked again, how the heck does destruction related to 3D arts? Well, yes you can do a clean looking scene like an interior design for a living, but if you want to work at a game development or VFX company, you will need to learn how material deteriorates. Let's use this renders of Higgs I did from Death Stranding as an example, you can see how Higgs hoodie has some smudge from the rain, even though it just a subtle change from the roughness value of the model's texture, it has a lot of impact on the realism of the character. Without it, 
The hood would not be very convincing simply because he is always in the rain, and surely he does not bother to clean his hood every time, making some raindrops dry up without cleaning it. Another good example of this character, is again, the raindrop from this baby pod. To the people who do not know, the rain from the Death Stranding will make you old and die instantly if you are exposed to it, that's why they call it the Time Fall. I know that the equipment that Higgs uses is capable of withstanding the Time Fall but surely it will still rip some paint off and rust some metal over time. That's why you see, some paint dissolved due to the raindrops from the Time Fall. Another good example is this baby pod edges, you'll notice that it has some paint ripped off, it is because edges are more exposed to high pressure impacts due to its small surface area. That's why you will notice some painted objects that are really old, always have scratches on them compared to the wide and flat surfaces. So, here are the basic steps on how to create realistic deterioration textures. First, determine what is the base material of your model, is it made from metal, or perhaps a painted wood. In my case, this is a skull so obviously I need to use a skull texture. Second, what kind of environment does your 3D model sit in? Is it a dusty old abandoned house? Then it should be dusty. But in my case, the skull is sitting on a pile of ground dirt, so it should be covered with dirt too. You should also consider time, what I mean is you should also know how long that object sits in that environment, does it receive sunlight and rain? Then the weathering and the deterioration of that object's material will be greater. Again, in my case, this skull has sat on this ground for almost a decade or more, so it should look deteriorated more than its original texture, like this. You see, these fundamentals are not only to make your scene or your character look better and realistic, you can also use this to tell a story about your artwork. If you love doing texturing like me, then I suggest you learn these fundamentals more. That's it for today, I will upload the continuation of this video by tomorrow. I am assuming that you love these guides because you reached the end so drop a like and a comment of what you want to learn next time and I will try to upload a guide for that. Also, if you notice it's not my real voice, it's actually an AI doing a voiceover of my script I wrote, because my accent sucks. And lastly please make sure to subscribe because I love doing this kind of stuff but my daytime job is always in the way and I can't do this full time yet but I would love to. Thank you and see you tomorrow.